Hey guys, what's up? Pat here from smartpassiveincome.com and welcome to the sixth and final video in our how to start an email list series. So all the other videos are laid out for you at startanemaillist.com. I would highly recommend you check that out and watch all the other videos first before you watch this one if you happen to just randomly find this one because segmentation, which is what we're gonna be talking about today and tagging and, and sort of dividing that large list you have into mini segments so you can better serve them and send them unique content, it's not easy but it's very powerful and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So if you haven't watched the other videos yet, go to startanemaillist.com and start there. Now, if you're ready, let's just dive right in. To start off this lesson about segmentation, I wanna tell you a quick story about when I was a waiter at Macaroni Grill. Now this picture was taken much, much later. I just found a Macaroni Grill at an airport and I knew I was gonna put it into a presentation at one point, so I asked a stranger to take a picture and it was really weird and awkward and uh, anyway, that, that happened. Um, but I remember when I was studying to become a waiter, I was very focused and determined to increase my tips as much as possible. And so I figured out quite quickly that if I could understand whether or not a person who, who came in as a, as a customer or a patron, if they were brand new to Ramona's Macaroni Grill, I should treat them a different way than somebody who had been in before. And if I could do, if I could do that and start to learn more about the person who was my customer, I could better serve them, give them a better experience, and thus make more tips. And that is absolutely what happened. So what I was doing was basically uh, executing the IFTTT rule. If you know what that means, it means if this, then that. If this happens, then you do that. So in your email list, if you know this about your subscriber, you send them information about that, of which is relevant to them. So that's this whole point here, segmentation, dividing your audience up to a point where you're learning more about them and you understand them in a way that you are giving them stuff that's relevant specific for them. Because yes, we're collecting this one giant bucket of people right now. However, inside that bucket, there's gonna be many more subdivisions that you should pay attention to and offer content for. The big mistake I was making for an email list that was growing up to 130,000 was that I treated everyone the same. Everybody was in the same bucket. Everybody was getting the same autoresponder emails. Everybody was getting the same broadcast. And you know, I thought it was working okay. I was getting a 20% open rate on my emails uh, on average, and then a 3.5% click-through rate on emails that had links enclosed in them. And I thought that was pretty good. However, when I finally learned the power of segmentation and I implemented this strategy, I soon saw numbers that were averaging, again, this is average, 65% open rates and an 8.5% click-through rate. And this was all the way up to now, uh, which is close to what I have now, 175,000 emails. And it's amazing, the results have been super impactful for the traffic that's coming to my site from those clicks to the action that people are taking and of course the thank yous I'm getting for serving my audience. And I want you to use segmentation in a smart way so that you can better serve your audience too. Now there's a quote that pretty much sums up everything we're talking about here and this is from Michael Croft and that is, the idea of dividing a market up into homogenous segments and targeting each with a distinct product and or message is now at the heart of marketing theory. That's Michael J. Croft, actually, not Michael J. Fox, but Michael J. Croft. And it's true, targeting each sort of bucket uh, with a distinct product and or message is gonna be really important because the better uh, the personalization is, or it seems, the more likely it is a person is to act. So that, that idea of buckets is really important. So the question, is then, well, how do we segment our audience? How do we find your buckets? Now, the term buckets does come from a book, which I'll talk about in just a second, that really was a game changer for me in terms of segmentation. Um, but the first and most important thing is when you're trying to divide up your audience into these different pools that you can then serve with unique products and unique messaging, keep it simple. Always try to keep it simple because you can divide your audience in 100,000 different ways, and if you were to do that, everything is gonna get messy and it's just not gonna work very well. Keep it simple. And the simplest and easiest way to do this would be to divide your audience into two buckets, and that is to serve the leads and your customers. So people who have yet to become customers and then people who are customers. And on the top level, it makes complete sense, right? If you have a customer who's a, a buyer of your product, you wouldn't want to send them messages 
that said, hey, buy this product that you already have, right? You wouldn't send that message to them. You would send that message to your leads. And so if you can at least understand who your leads are and who your customers are, uh, you're gonna be that much further ahead than most people. Now, of course, you can expand this a little bit and have uh, sort of warm leads, right? You can have warm that feed into hot, that feed into customer. So a warm lead might be somebody on your email list who has said that they're interested in a particular topic. A hot lead might be somebody who's actually given you a phone call or in some way has transacted with you uh, in maybe a smaller way. And then a customer, of course, is somebody who then ends up making a purchase. Each of them would be getting a different set of emails or messages, whether they're broadcasts or autoresponder emails from you. So again, the big lesson here, don't treat all of your leads or emails the same. Now, there are gonna be groups of people, like, like we said, these buckets of people who all have similar interests, who would benefit from a different message than another bucket. But for now, we're gonna talk about Step one. And step one is to find out what your buckets are by asking a simple question. And this comes straight from a book. I'll mention that in just a minute. But the question is, what's the number one biggest challenge you have related to blank? So if you are a photographer, for example, and you ask your photography subscribers, you know, what's the number one biggest challenge you have related to blank? You're going to get some people who say one thing other people who say another, and then you know, you're gonna get a whole bunch of different messages, but you'll be able to clump them together and create these different buckets. This comes directly from a book called Ask by Ryan Levesque, and this is an absolutely terrible screenshot. I don't know why I pulled it out, but just to show you, I got a lot of information from this book, and it really helped me divide my audience into the three different buckets that I'll show you in just a minute. Now, the way I determined the buckets was, again, by asking this question to my audience. What's the number one biggest challenge you have related to online business, which is what I was teaching about. And I started to see answers come in and I started to clump them together because they were very obvious. There were answers like these. I'm overwhelmed from all the information available to me. I don't know where to start. I'm afraid of wasting my time and money. I'm not sure what kind of business I'd like to create or the fear of failure is stopping me from moving forward. I put all of these people who had uh, shared answers similar to this into bucket number one. These were people who had no online business, they have an itch to get started and they read and listen to a lot of content. That's sort of what I've uh, dis discovered about this particular group. I used a tool called SurveyMonkey to survey my audience, uh, but you can do this by simply just sending an email to your existing subscribers or even just on your website or in, on your podcast. Again, what's the number one biggest challenge you have related to blank? Then I got another set of answers that were more like this. I'm fearful I'm just wasting my time. I'm trying to do too many things at the same time. I'm not seeing the results I expected at this point. I don't know what my ne next steps should be. Uh, so these were people I clumped into what we called bucket number two. And these are people who specifically have an online business. They've already started. Uh, they generate less than $500 a month, so they're not necessarily uh, making a living off of their online business at this point, but they want to. Um, and then they suffer from what is called superhero syndrome. This is coined by uh, Chris Ducker from his book, Virtual Freedom. And superhero syndrome is they try to do everything on their own. They haven't yet built a team and they're just suffering because of it. Um, and, then, and, and then I clumped everybody else into bucket number three, the people who were making more than $500 a month. So having these three buckets here is how I divided my audience. And now I'm able to serve them by sharing different information for each. So for example, bucket number one, right? People who have yet to start an online business, do you feel like they would benefit from an article on advanced search engine optimization? Probably not, right? If they got that email, they would probably be overwhelmed and leave or unsubscribe. And that's actually what was happening. So I would sometimes, when I just had that one giant bucket of people, I would just sometimes have advanced content boom, send it out to everybody. Sometimes have beginner content, boom, send it out to everybody. And with the beginner content, what do you think the bucket three people thought about that? Oh, I outgrew Pat's site, I don't need it anymore. So as you can see, having these different buckets is key. Okay, so now let's get to the question, well, how do you divide your audience in, into this, uh, these, these different buckets? Well, you can actually have them do it on their own based on certain actions that they take uh, and based on where they take those actions. So here's how we're gonna get our audience to divide itself. You can actually do it using these tools like ConvertKit, which we've talked about in this tutorial. There's a lot of other uh, advanced tools that are a lot more expensive that can do this as well, um, but I prefer ConvertKit because it's just easy to use and it can do these things uh, quite fine. So the first way we're gonna do this is through your main list. So if you're building a main list or you have a main list already, or even if you are starting from scratch and you plan on having sort of a main bucket that people are gonna feed into before you segment them, this is how it works. So 
I'm going to give you an example just to show you the power of this and how it all kind of is configured. Then I'm actually going to go into ConvertKit and show you how to actually uh, do this. So if you have a main list, you want to send your main list an email. And in that email, you want to offer them choices, choices for which bucket they should be in. So here's how I did it using my main list after I decided to finally get smart with email. So this is an email I send out or I actually broadcasted this out to everybody. Now people get this in the autoresponder if they sign up to the main list. But the part I wanna show you is this part down here, which is which of the following best describes your online business activity? Click on the one answer that best describes you. And to set this up, I say, hey, you know what? I wanna send you emails that matter to you. I don't wanna send you stuff that is irrelevant. I'm here to help you, but I need you to first click on the thing that, link that makes sense for you below. So number one, I don't have an online business. Number two, I have an online business, but I'm stuck between uh, zero to 500. Number three, I have an online business that is generating more than 500 per month. So that's how I've been dividing my bucket as uh, you saw earlier. Now, if you wanna get the exact copy that I use for this email so you can examine it, so you can uh, swipe it and use it for yourself, obviously change it around for your business, um, but you can do that by going to smartpassiveincome.com slash bucket copy. Again, that's smartpassiveincome.com slash bucket copy, and uh, that'll give it to you straight away in a text file that you can just uh, rip, no problem. So here's that email, the same one I was showing you. You can see the three links uh, down here below. And the way this is set up is actually done through link triggers. So if I were to create, let's say I had a fourth option, just for example, I highlight this, I'm gonna click on link up here, insert link, and I use a link trigger. These are links that I've already crafted that will take specific actions depending on which one I select. And what I mean by that, probably gonna be best if I just show you how to actually set that up. So I'm gonna actually click uh, on automations here, open up a new tab. This is truly the power behind ConvertKit and where segmentation happens. I have a number of these trigger to actions involved. So remember, if this, then that, right? I'm gonna add a new rule, and here are all your triggers, and here are all the actions. So if I want somebody to click a link and have an action happen as a result, meaning I tag them as uh, being a bucket number one person and also at the same time subscribe them to a sequence for that bucket one person, here's how it works. So clicks a link, I'm gonna insert uh, bucket number one, for example. Uh, I've already done this, so I'm not gonna save the rule, but I can enter, and I have to enter a destination URL. And so this essentially is the only other step you have to take. You have to create a landing page. It could be very simple. It could just simply say, hey, thanks for uh, letting me know that uh, you did this, or whatever, whatever the action is. Or uh, on sort of the next level, you can create a landing page specific for people who you know are in bucket number one, and I'll show you what mine looks like in a second. So you just put the URL in there, uh, whatever the URL might be. So it might be smartpassiveincome.com slash bucket one. I, that's, that one's not real, but I'm just giving it to you as an example. So name, bucket one, destination URL, bucket uh, this one here. And when they click on that link, then they will, I want them to subscribe to a sequence, which will be the bucket one sequence. And at the same time, I wanna tag them. So add a tag, and I have all these tags already here. So you can see I've gotten quite uh, a lot of tags here, but that's because there's many different products and many different promotions and things going on. Um, it is actually a lot easier to uh, organize than you think, but um, I actually have it as level zero here. I should change the name to bucket one. But now if I put this link into an email, again, by selecting it from this section here, once I save it on the other page, it'll actually put itself here, um, then I'm good to go. Then every time a person clicks on that, that action happens. So they will not only be tagged as a bucket one person, they will also at the same time be entered into that sequence and they will go to the landing page. Now this is what this landing page looks like and you can see it's specifically crafted to this particular bucket. It says literally, welcome future entrepreneur. Let's get your business going. Right? This isn't anything I would say to somebody who already has a business. And then I give them some tips and like a video just for them, my thoughts on beginnings, uh, some resources for people who are just starting out, all those kinds of things. And I actually inserted some Facebook comments down here just to show you that there are people landing here and they're telling me exactly what they need help with. I mean, it, this is literally a gold mine of information for me for what I could do next. And the last thing I wanna say is that the email that we've been looking at here, the, the one with the three choices, that's this first email here when people subscribe to the main list. Now, not everybody is actually going to uh, subscribe themselves to you know bucket one, two, or three. And again, as a reminder, when people do that, you then remove them from this list because they don't need it anymore. And again, that's important because what you should do is in your 
emails that happen after that, which can be any number of days afterwards, I mean, we could actually benefit from adding a few more here. But in the follow-up emails, you want to continually ask. I would say uh, every email or every other email, if you want to continue to add some more content and just provide value, uh, not everybody who sees this is going to self-subscribe uh, to a different bucket or, or, or click on those links right away. So it might take a little bit more asking, but uh, do that, and you're going to get a lot of people to self-segment into those uh, buckets that you have, and and then you're off to the races. Next, another way to have your audience self-subscribe to these buckets is called segment-specific actions. So depending on the actions that they take on your website or the things that they download or the content that they consume, you can automatically skip the, hey, which one are you, question and put them into the bucket that you know that they deserve to be in because of the actions that they've taken. So it could be, for example, uh, a blog post or a podcast or a video or a specific download, like I said, or maybe even a guest post that's specifically tailored to one of those buckets, a social post or maybe a sales pitch. Whichever one of those happen that you know is specific for one of those buckets, if somebody takes an action on that page, then you can, if possible, tag them as being in one of those buckets. So a great example comes from the world of photography. So if you're a photographer and you have a blog and the post is specifically about a brand new Canon camera and you have a, like a quick start guide for how to use this brand new Canon camera, you can have them download that guide and then immediately segment them into the Canon group because in the world of photography, you're either a Canon or you're a Nikon or a Sony or whatever. But you can collect that information based off of that download because somebody who's a Nikon or Sony user is probably not going to have use out of that. The way that this is done in ConvertKit, it's very easy. You just have to set up either a landing page or a form and then connect that form to an action that then triggers that specific tag that you want to give them or, or the sequence that they want to get into. So for example, I'm just going to run with that Canon example just for fun. Uh, so let's do this. I'm not going to customize this completely, but, but let's just do Canon Quick Start Guide. I'm going to save that. Should change the, uh, actually changing the titles done in the settings. And that's important because I want to be able to find this form later. So Canon Quick Start Guide. Uh, so save form. I can actually automatically put people into a specific sequence if they go into this particular form. I don't have a Canon one, so I'll just put a test there for now. And then what I do is head on over to automations, set up a new rule. When this event happens, which is subscribes to a form, I'm gonna select that form, again, Canon Quick Start Guide, then I want this action to happen. So I already selected they could subscribe to a sequence through that form, so it could be done there and or here, but I'm just gonna make sure that I tag that person as, uh, let's see, Canon user, and uh, save that rule. Now I embed that form onto that blog post or that podcast episode, and now I know when people subscribe because they're subscribing to something that is related to, or downloading something that's related to uh, specifically their interest, um, I, re I already know that that's them and I don't need to ask them later. So the last strategy of segmentation that I wanna talk about is sort of a hybrid of what we've already done. It uses the exact same strategies, but more on a micro level. So you have these buckets that you wanna collect information about, you wanna put people into those buckets, but even within those buckets, you wanna understand a little bit more about your audience. So for me, for example, you know my three buckets, but then what if I wanna know if a person has a podcast or not? And that could be relevant for both bucket two and bucket three, obviously not for bucket one, the people who have yet to start a business, they're not ready for that question. So you can collect micro interests about your audience and just start to learn a little bit more, which can then influence who you send product information to or who you send uh, announcements to and, and those kinds of things. So inside the buckets that you've already collected, if people are subscribed to one of these buckets, they're already in a sequence, you can, in an autoresponder email that you've pre-written, have them select between two things. Again, using the link triggers and that sort of strategy that we talked about earlier, it's very simple, A or B, and I actually do this. So in one of my emails, in both the bucket two sequence and the bucket three sequence, I ask them literally, hey, by the way, I'm just trying to learn more about you. Do you have a podcast or do you not have a podcast? Click here if you do, click here if you don't. And again, it's very easy to set up just like we did. Um, these landing pages specifically, just go to a page that says, hey, thanks for letting me know and uh, you know, thanks for helping me help you, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, very simple, you can have one landing page for all of these kinds of little interests that you have. That way uh, it doesn't have to get crazy and you have a specific landing page for people who do have a podcast or a specific landing page for people who don't. Now I really love what Cliff Ravenscraft from Podcast Answer Man is doing. You'll see one of these thank you pages here. He actually does create a unique thank you page for every answer. However, it just is 
very simple to change. So, for example, uh, he sent me an email that asked, you know, how well my business was doing, and that way he could send more information related to that. And he goes, hey, thank you. You've let me know that you have an online business that generates over $5,000 per month. Congratulations. I will reach out to you as soon as I develop new content related to taking your existing best uh, business efforts to the next level. Thank you so much for being a part of the community. He makes it fun with the, like a really funny scene here in Star Wars. Uh, it's really cool. So you can do something like this as well. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, which all of this has been leading up to, is after creating these different buckets and learning about these different interests, you know, what is the real power here? That, that's the ability to deliver unique content to each of these groups. Again, you're going to get a higher open rate, better click-through rate, but more than that, you're going to build a better relationship because people are going to know that they're in the right spot by following you and trusting you with the information that's going to help them. So what are some of the best compliments that you can get when you send people content or you create content of any, any kind, really, here are some of them. This is exactly what I was looking for. This is one of my favorite comments because that just shows me that I'm creating stuff that, well, a person really, really wanted. You read my mind, similar thing. And this one's my absolute favorite. I feel like you wrote this just for me. That is your goal. And you will, using these strategies, and delivering unique content that, again, is valuable and helpful for those specific groups that you're segmenting, you will get responses like that. So I'll, let me give you an example of uh, an email that I send out to bucket number one. Again, these are people who have yet to start an online business. After they self-subscribe into that bucket, or I find out that that's where they be, or I find out that that's where they should be, this is the first email I send them. And I really play up to the fact that they have yet to start an online business but also that I know what they're going through. So as you can see in the subject line here, it says future entrepreneurs, read this. You've seen that before on the landing page, but really, really play like, hey, you, this, is, this is your future here. And then down here, you'll see that it starts with, hey, Pat here, quick question. Do any of these following statements reflect where you are right now with your desire to create an online passive income business? Let me highlight some of them for you. I'm overwhelmed from all the information available to me. The fear of failure is stopping me from moving forward. Remember, I'm asking them, hey, do, do any of these resonate with you? Uh, I don't know where to start. I'm not sure what kind of business I'd like to create. I'm afraid of wasting my time and money. Where have you seen these before? You saw these earlier in the presentation from the survey answers I got, right? What's the number one biggest challenge you have related to online business? This was sort of the bucket one group of answers. And I literally just copy and pasted them into this email. And here are the kinds of responses I'm getting from my new subscribers to the bucket one list. Laura says, hey, Pat, I feel like you are in my head. I'm thinking every single one of those thoughts constantly. Here's one from Jacqueline who said, hello, Pat. Wow, all of those statements and more definitely describe how I feel about the prospect of starting any kind of online business. Or here's one from Essien who said, hey, Pat, I've never met someone who has vividly described me when it comes to online business like you've just done. Do you think that these people and everybody else who's having the same thoughts from the emails I'm sending, do you think that they're going to open the next set of emails that are coming through? Do you think that they're going to be more likely to click on those links that are going to be in those emails? Absolutely. This is how you start the process of then building raving fans. It starts with these little moments where you can really prove that this is for them. It's like a good song, right? A song that has lyrics that's describing everything that you're going through in life. Like you will start listening to that band. You will buy their DVDs and their, their CDs if those things exist anymore. And again, this is where it all starts. So think, think even bigger. What can happen as a result of all of this? Well, I wrote a book called Will It Fly? And here's the tagline to this book. Will It Fly? How to test your next business idea so you don't waste your time and money. Where did that tagline come from? It came from directly those same exact survey answers. So again, going back to that book, Ask by Ryan Levesque, super important. Don't be afraid to ask your audience what their biggest challenges are, what they're struggling with, because those can be the seeds for you to create more than just emails, but products and books. And this book, uh, thankfully, became on to become a Wall Street Journal bestseller, even as a self-published book. You can check it out at willitflybook.com. Um, but again, it's all because I'm learning more about my audience I'm understanding what their needs are, and I'm delivering content that's just for them. So last thing before we uh, have a final word, and that is, so I guess this is a pre-final final word, uh, and that is stop guessing and let your buckets tell you the way, right? Most of the decisions I make now in my business are not guesses. They are a result of 
the hard work and the research that I've done and the implementation of these segmentation strategies. So stop guessing. Let your buckets tell you the way. All right, guys, before I let you go, there's one final thing I wanted to say because, you know, this is the last we're going to see each other for a while. Um, no, I'm just kidding. So hopefully I'll see you some more. Um, but really quick, a couple things. If you really want to get ConvertKit, which I highly recommend, as you saw, it's the email service provider that I use. Uh, in full disclosure, I am an advisor for the company as well, and I highly recommend them. You can check them out through my affiliate link at smartpassiveincome.com slash C. K. I do get a commission if you go through that link at no extra cost to you, but I just want to be upfront with you. Smartpassiveincome.com slash CK. As you can see throughout this entire tutorial, it's extremely powerful. Again, I highly recommend it. And then finally, the last thing I want to say uh, is more of a reminder, something that I said back in video number one of this tutorial. And that is, even though you're going to be checking all these numbers all the time, you're going to check your open rates and you're going to see how much your list grows over time. And it will if you follow these strategies. Remember, Every subscriber is an actual human being. It's a real person on the other end. And if you keep that in mind throughout your entire email marketing career, if you will, you will win. Because when you consider that those are real people on the other end, you're gonna have empathy for them. You're gonna remember that you're there to serve them and they will in turn reward you for serving them. So remember, serve first. Remember those are actual people on the other end. And plus, if you're going through this process and it's a little bit difficult, don't worry, it is difficult. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is, this is hard stuff and congratulations to getting to the end of this and actually putting things into action. But even if you have, even if you have 20 people on your email list. You might feel kind of down because that's not very many people, but consider a room, a real life room that you are in where there's 20 people who are there who have signed up to get more information from you. That's what it's like. I want you to remember that and visualize that. A room full of however many subscribers you have because that's, ex that's exactly what it is. Those are real people who are waiting to hear from you, who need your help. So go out there, serve first. You will be rewarded and best of luck. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, and then finally, you know, just head on over to startanemaillist.com if you haven't gone there yet. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this tutorial. Uh, I'm just here to, here to help you and um, hopefully you'll get some results too. So thank you so much. I appreciate you and I'll see you on the website.